Hello and welcome everyone to another stream of Network Programmability Lab. I am Dmitry and today we are going to continue writing a custom Ansible module. We started last time um, and um, well, it was kind of funny and embarrassing at the same time <laughs> because um, apparently, apparently their docs are not so uh, good. Let's put it. Let's let's put it out there. And uh, well, basically, during the whole stream, I was trying to figure out how can I do what I want to do, and uh, it didn't work out so well. So. Basically, after three hours of stream, we barely did anything useful. Uh, that said, um, that said, during this week, well, I mean, I, I need to use part of that, uh, part of uh, part of this functionality in my work project. So uh, I actually have to do it anyways, and. Um, um, well, basically, I spent the whole week reading docs, uh, doing some trial and error tests, trying to understand how this works, how can I do what I want. Um, I also had help from uh, Network to Code Slack community, so they helped me with some of the queries that I had. And I think after after this week, I feel much more confident with Ansible. I discovered so many different features and knobs that are present there that I did not expect uh, but um, you know it, it's kind of good to know the tool a little bit better um, so now I feel much more confident in Zansible and I was able to write partially what I wanted not 100% yet so um, yeah, so that part I wrote off the stream, I wrote my custom uh, variables plugin for which they have absolutely zero documentation, um, like kudos to the team, but uh, uh, yeah, so I was able to figure that out. Uh, I will show you today how that can be done. Uh, I think it's really worth me investing some time and writing some blog post or something like this. Because during the whole week, besides me reading docs and doing trial and error, I was also searching on the internet a lot. I was trying to either find some video from some conference about writing that, maybe there was some tutorial, or maybe some blog post who described, you know, where people described how to do what I wanted to do. And apparently, so, well, I discovered some. So I discovered a couple of videos and a couple of blog posts, not many. And the funny part is most of the stuff that I discovered was uh, from 2015-2016. And this is a point where they had completely different API. So from Ansible, I think 2.0, they changed the whole, the whole uh, architecture, I would say, and the whole API. Uh, and basically, if you copy paste any examples that you will, you know, you see from 2015, it will not work. <laughs> so, yeah, um, it's like finding a uh, windmill. Uh, so that was quite painful, but I'm happy that I was able to figure it out eventually. Actually, it's not that it's not that complicated. Um, so the whole process is quite easy. So if somebody, um, if someone was, um, if someone from Red Hat would spend like literally one day of their working time to documenting that, that would be great. Like I could imagine that nobody would really had any problems because it's, I will show you in just like five minutes or so. It was super easy, but since it was, there was no documentation whatsoever. Uh, you know, that didn't work out so well. I will actually also show you the docs to to prove that, you know, I'm not lying or just whining because I couldn't figure it out. Uh, okay, uh, there is one question. You were writing a REST API module or a netconf one? 
I did neither. I I have. I will get into it in just a second what I was doing because we will continue doing that today. I had some custom functionalities that I had to implement um, for building Q and Q tunnels based on specific variable declaration file uh, that is supposed to modify variables for each hosts uh, in based on some global settings. Um, We'll, we'll see in just a couple of minutes. But before we do that, let's start with a couple of announcements. So last week I actually announced that there will be no stream this week. That um, And usually we have streams on Sunday. So um, the reason why, well, I actually decided to have a stream this week, but on Saturday, the main reason why is that I'm leaving tomorrow morning. I'm going to US for to Ohio for a week. Um, so yeah, I was, I was spent, spent in Ohio one week and I will come back before weekend, I think, or I think on Saturday I, I, I come back. So we should be able to have our usual, usual stream on Sundays next week. Okay. So another announcement is, uh, this week I had the power of ISXC programmability webinar on Cisco, uh, learning at Cisco, on Cisco learning network. Um, so I think, I think it went well. Uh, I had some, some pro problems here and there with specifically with the demo. I forgot to, to show one part that I really wanted to, but I didn't have a lot of time. Um, I think it went well. There is still, I feel, there is always room for improvement. So I will have to work on my presentation skills and stuff. But uh, the recording should be available, I think, early next week. Or you know what? Let me just double check. Let me double check. Maybe they already posted it. I, I don't think they did. But uh, you know, I could check check it out. So the webinar series is called Links. Uh, Foundations for intent based networking. Okay, this one. Uh, maybe not this one. I think it should. Let's see. All right. Okay. So yeah, the recording is not posted yet. The recording of all previous webinars uh, are already there on the page. So you see, there will be a lot more in the future. So it's every Thursday at 10 a.m. Pacific time. So next week we will talk about Meraki and stuff. But I don't think I will be. I don't think I have any more webinars as part of the series where I am presenting. So. Uh, that said, I really encourage you to join if you would like to know about latest Cisco innovations in enterprise space. Um, so yeah, if you are interested in programmability, uh, be sure to check check this page sometime in the middle of next week. I think they will be able to to, f to finish uh, post processing of recording and post it there. Uh, and another one, I think I announced it last week as well, but you know, I, I think it's a good good reminder for people who didn't watch the previous stream. Um, Cisco released uh, one and a half week ago, um, layer two campus, uh, uh, Cisco validated, validated design playbooks that are using NetConf to configure uh, the L2, camp L L2 access campus network. Um, and check that out. So it's pretty cool. You can just substitute a couple of variables and it will configure a bunch of devices for you. Okay, so I think that's all from on announcement side. So let me go back to first topology and then what I'm trying to do and where we are with the lab. Okay, so topology is right here. You see, we are not using our typical network programmability lab topology that, that we were using before. The main reason why I already talked about it uh, is uh, we, um, well, that, that, that lab uh, requires some redesign and I 
still don't have time for it uh, to do it. So in this particular case, we are writing a module for very specific use case. So I basically built a separate lab specifically for this. We were using the same topology last time. So what, what is this? Uh, here I have basically two routers, two switches, and they are supposed to be, um, what, what I'm trying to build is I want to build a scalable lab system where you have your pod gear, in this case it's two routers and two switches are pod gear. And basically for any kind of lab, um, you would want to have some specific topology, right? So you won't want to connect your pod gear in a very specific way. For example, you for your specific lab, you would want to, conf uh, to have a connection between R1 and R2, R1 and switch 2 and so on. So, and imagine all of this stuff is, is uh, physical equipment. So the idea here was, well, let's, um, let's connect all of these devices to some switches that are called matrix switches in this case. And using Q and Q, we are going to, to have this uh, layer to connectivity between devices that we want to connect. So, for example, if I want to connect R1 and R2, I will use some specific dot uh, 1Q tunnel number, let's say 2500, uh, where, you know, basically I put additional tag for this traffic going from R1 to R2. So it co goes kind of transparently through matrix uh, switches. Um, yeah, so that's, that's our use case. And ideally, I would also want to have my lab system be as scalable. So that means that I may have a bunch of lab pods and a bunch of different topologies. And the tool that I chose to do that is Ansible. I think uh, it's a great use case for it. So let me describe why would I need to write a custom module. Uh, so let me go to my code here. Basically, let me start with my inventory file. So inventory file is pretty straightforward here. I have uh, I have my group all. It has one host called dummy host. Uh, actually, not sure if this is this is a good if, if this is a best practice. Ansible dummy host. I know I can use local host, but. Uh, Set back the scope to host. Whatever, we'll see. We, potentially, we could use local host, but maybe not. I'm um, because sometimes you actually want stuff to be part of all group. I can add local host here. It doesn't really matter. Um, so, okay, never mind about this dummy for now. Here we have uh, two additional nested groups. One is called pod gear and infra. In pod gear, we have pod routers and pod switches. So I have uh, my IP address for management port on R1 and R2. The same applies for switches. And then I also have my matrix group and it has two switches, matrix one and matrix two. So, I want to have a very I want to have declarative way to define my pods and my um, I want to have a very specific way to define topology and lab pods. So I was really trying hard to, to find out good variable structures that I would like to use because I don't want to go directly to here to group bars or host bars and put some static VLAN numbers or something like this. For example, if we are talking about connection part, I would like to just say, well, I want this port on this guy be connected to this port on this guy. And then that all VLAN part should be done out automatically. So the script should just take some particular VLAN, configure it on proper switches and stuff like that. So uh, I wanted to abstract the specific, let's say, host variables like VLANs that you use for Q&Q. &Q. 
Okay, so this is a structure that I I was figuring out. Oh well, I I, I, I think I designed uh, designed the way I wanted to. Basically, I have in my in my playbook folder I have my uh, folder called topologies, and it has programmability lab and programmability lab dev. We'll be using mainly one topology, which is programmability lab. If you look on this file. The only thing it con uh, it contains is uh, connections uh, key and the value you have a list of lists where you specify well I want to have I want to have this device on this port connected to this device to this port and then this device here connected to this device there. Now there is one very important piece here is that if you look on this Hostname, it doesn't make any sense because you you don't have it here. You don't have it in in um, in uh, inventory YAML in hosts YAML. You don't have this uh, SJBR1 and SJBR2. So what is going on here? Well, if you think about it. When we are talking about lab topology, you would have some kind of um, some kind of lab host name for your devices, right? So in this case, this is my lab host name. This is not like a host name of my physical device, if it makes sense. So, oops. So here is my like physical gear, like R1, R2, switch one, switch two. But logically, when I build topology on top of this physical gear, some of these devices will have this lab host name and it may change per lab, right? So in one lab, you name them, uh, you name, basically, if you select one lab, you name this guy as SJBR1. And if you, let's say, select another lab, this guy will become, as uh, let's say, Brussels, uh, Brussels router one or something like this, right? So and imagine if you are the one building a topology usually you have like some kind of topology on piece of paper or whatever in Visio that you want to build but at this point you don't want to tie this to physical equipment yet you just want to specify how your topology looks like where your connections are and so on that's why i have this interesting structure where, where i'm referring to device which is not a physical host, like which is not a host name in my Ansible. So if, if it makes sense. And here, for example, there is another lab called Programmability Lab Dev, and it has this very similar structure. And maybe let me actually do this: be a, be a brew router one, and let's say something like this. So you see, basically here I have different lab host names. Okay. So this is basically how I create like a lab topology. Remember, I told you that also I want to have it to have it scalable. So it may happen that I have a bunch of physical gear, and I want to say, well, I would like to have three pods of this lab and four pods of this lab on the same physical gear, okay? So, but this particular stuff defines only like how connections are done per lab. So there obviously should be some, some other stuff. There should be basically uh, mapping from physical host name to this lab host name and there should be a mapping to some particular lab type and lab pod number. So this is where I have my labs folder and you see it's named very in very specific way. It says one underscore programmability underscore lab. So basically like it indicates that I want to have one lab of, of programmability lab. Or maybe I could create another file which will say 10 and programmability lab. Okay, so something like this. Or I could say 
one programmability lab, one programmability lab dev. Um, so something like this. And you know what? I will actually rename this uh, to just dev. I think this would be better. Dev. Okay. So yeah, then I would have, let's say, one programmability lab, one dev. Okay. So let's look on this file and you will, you will see what is going on. Uh, for now, disregard this part. This is not, uh, this is something in plants. It's not relevant for now, but let's look on this top, uh, top uh, thing. So here you have first key, which is called devices. And here you list uh, keys as keys, every piece of your pod gear and your like physical name, okay? So the same as I have here in GNSV, the same as that I have in hosts uh, for Ansible. And you put the two pieces of information. You put a pod number for this device. So you say, okay, this particular box is going to be in pod number 1000 or in pod number one, doesn't really matter the number. <laughs> and its lab host name will, will be SJDSW1. Okay, so now I basically have a mapping of my physical gear to my lab host name. And then for every single device in my pod gear, I can specify these parameters here to have a mapping for them. And then I have another key called pods. And here I have uh, as a key this uh, pod number 1000. And I say, well, pod number 1000 is programmability lab. So, and maybe I would. I could have another pod 2000, which will be of lab type dev. Okay. Guys, okay, so let me know if you want to know some more of, or you, you have maybe a better idea that that will work too. So yeah, but basically whenever I want to, to change what I'm going to do with my physical gear, I will basically create another file here, which will be, you know, of whatever labs that I, I want to create. And that's pretty much it. Um, now, there are a couple of problems um, with this file structure. First one is uh, this topology folder is uh, create some challenges, let's put it that way. With any kind of techniques that you could have in Ansible, With, yeah, with any kind of techniques that you can have in Ansible. The problem is your, your physical gear can serve, can serve multiple labs at the same time. Let's say one part of this, another part of that. So you, you want to load all of the topologies, all of your topologies that are present under this topology. So then you can make a decision on which one you're going to use or not. Now, if you can see here on this topology YAML for this one and for this one, they have the same key. Okay. So, and basically this is a problem if you try to use like var vars files or include vars or any other kind of variables loading through Ansible, this will become a mess. Okay, because those have the same key and um, and uh, Ansible does not distinguish based on the folder name or file name for uh, loaded variables. So this is not going to work out so well. I tried a lot of stuff. I can actually show you how, to, how I was trying to solve this problem. I came up with this very actually, I think quite co complex logic. And then I found out that it's actually not working the way I want this to work. So here I had previously pre tasks and I was using include variables and in include variables, you can specify, um, you can specify, um, your file. Uh, no, let, let me let me start from uh, start it again. So here I have pre-task, which is a uh, calling include bars, 
However, I have this thing called this file tree. So it goes under the topologies and it says, well, if any of the items is directory, uh, then for we will load the file topologies uh, name of this name of this uh, directory and then topology yaml and we will save this in the uh, in the variable code the same way as directory we will run this only once um, because we need to do it only once basically we will delegate it to localhost so even though my hosts here is all matrix group this particular task will be done by localhost and then we also have delegate facts so this kind of works but partially as the resulting um the resulting structure is not so good i think i can actually show show it to you so i will uncomment this part and you know what let me also comment this part because i learned something you uh, like just a couple of days ago that if you use delegate facts and register um delegate facts does not work really so let me actually try without this register and see what will happen so okay and before I run this, I also need to rename this folder called Wars Plugins because otherwise it will it will be executed. Okay. And then I also have roles matrix dot one q tunnels, which should be in roles matrix dot one q tunnels tasks main yaml. Uh, I will uh, I will comment this part as well. So, and let's run this. Okay, so first I need to load my virtual environment. Net DevOps pin activate. Okay. And let's also see if there was any update to Ansible. Pip install Ansible equal equal. No, two. 0.5.0 is the latest one, okay. Okay, so now we should be able to call our playbook. <clears throat> so I need to go to scripts, uh, ansible dot one q tunnels, ansible dot one q tunnels. So Ansible playbook and I think I don't need to specify minus I now. So debug YAML and I will also put Ansible connection local. Ansible connection lock. No, I think I don't have to do this actually. Let me think about it. Um, I think there, there was another parameter there. There was a minus minus connection local, I think. Yeah, minus C local, okay. So minus C local. And then debug YAML like this. Probably I should let's say say localhost. Okay. 
this actually kind of works um yeah so i think yeah i think this is pretty close by the way so i have here for specifically for a local host i have this um i have this now key programmability lab and then connections inside and then i i had dev and i have dev connections so this is actually kind of work uh, works i didn't know let me see <clears throat> i didn't know that these two do not work together well but this seems to be almost exactly what i want ideally i want to have my key called topology and then inside of it topologies and then inside of it i would like to have dev and then i would like to have programmability lab so to distinguish basically um so and i'm not sure i will be able to do this using this maybe i'm wrong So let's double check. Maybe I could solve this this particular problem without the plugin. So Ansible include wars. I forgot that this doesn't work so well. Oh, well. Debs directory extensions file for function can name the name of the variable into which I send credit wars. If omitted, they will be made top level wars. Yeah, so I don't think I will be able to do here what, what I want uh, to have like topologies and then inside of it to have that. Include wars nested. Uh, variable name no I don't think it's possible Okay, so this particular structure is pretty close but again not exactly what I want so to solve this problem apparently you can create the vars plugin variables plugin so let me rename back this directory and let me show you my file that I called load topologies and uh, before I before I show you more just to show you that I was not lying when I said the documentation was bad let's say ansible uh, wars plugins yeah let's do like this um, Not this one, I think the, yeah, the, this one. Wars plugins, documentation on Ansible 2.4. Maybe they change here a little bit for 2.5. Let's see. Uh, developing plugins. Oh no. Pink. 
Jones. Yeah, okay, let's let's check this out. <gasps> Apparently they actually made documentation better in 2.5. First plugin were partially other Okay, before I read this, let me show you what you usually can get from Google. So this was for 2.4. Uh no, this one. So using uh, using variable plugins, you can run additional variable data, and what about this? More documentation on writing worse plugins is pending, so you can jump into GitHub repo. This link to to the code itself, and figure things out pretty easily. If you find yourself wanting to write the worst plugins, it's most likely you should write an inventory script instead. So let's go here and let's go to VARS and there is one plugin called host group VARS. So basically they send you here where there is more than like 100 lines of code without a single comment. So oh, like eh, you should be able to figure it out easily, right? Uh, so yeah. But let's see what, what they did in here in docs. Okay, so here you define get virus function. Okay. Oh, this is a useful information because I didn't know about this before. So loader can read files, auto load JSON YAML, path is directory data for every inventory source and current playbook directory, entities, host or group names that are pertinent to the variables needed. The plugin will get called once for hosts and again for groups. This get virus method just needs to return a dictionary structure with the variables. Well, if I knew about this page before, this would be pretty useful. Okay, so let me show you what, what I did. So basically you create here a new class called uh, Wars module base, um, inheriting base Wars plugin. You define this function with this particular uh, signature. And they say actually you don't need to pass cache to it, okay. I call the get Wars method from for my parent and then the only thing that this particular code is doing it's basically taking the current path joining these topologies and then it goes under every nested directory uh, saves the name of the directory and uh, using this the ansible function loader load from file it just loads this variables with the key of this directory name. So topology is dear name, it, it's loading those connections and then everything is uh, is uh, saved to result topologies equal topologies and it returns result. So basically what happened after running this on their first run, uh, it will for every host it will create this um, key called topologies where it will save this uh, everything nested okay so let me show you this and you see like obviously the code here is pretty straightforward if i knew this part and this part that would be awesome but you know for now 2.5 page i don't think it comes up in the google when, when you're just searching for developing plugins okay so let me run this uh, debug I can remove this one and let's say I am going to show all host wars 
once. I will run this once. Okay. So now, where is it? Basically, for every device, you will have this key topologies. Inside of it, you will have dev and programmability lab with connections. So, this is what I wanted. Matrix, blah, blah, blah. So, for every device, it will be the same. Which is good because now I can easily look that up. Uh, so. Yeah, this is what this thing is doing. Okay, so now our part is actually since we were able to load this data already in the proper structure, we need to we need to um, write another thing. And at very first, I was thinking that I have to actually do module, but I think I will actually do what is called action plugin. And the difference between action plugin and module is module is executed remotely and it has only parameters that you send to the module uh, compared to action plugin which is actually always executed on the controller on the machine where Ansible is running and action plugin has actually access to all of the variables from of the playbook uh, and so on uh, so and usually what happens is actually whenever you call any module most of the time the first thing that is done is action plugin is called that is doing some kind of setup for the module and, feed, feed, and it feeds some variables to the module and then module together with these variables are sent remotely and they are executed so under under cover for modules, well, under yeah, under the shell, you almost always have action plugins that do a lot of stuff, and then then you may have something else in mod module, but you don't have to. So there are modules, for example, like template, right? Uh, they are listed as modules, but essentially they are only action plugins because they are always template module is always executed locally. Um, so the whole thing is just basically an action plugin. So the way uh, the way you define them, you put them in action plugins folder. In this case, I have iOS one Q tunnel uh, plugin, and that's pretty much it. The, now you can call iOS one Q tunnel as it would be a module. So pretty straightforward. So this part I did not write yet, so that's what I will be doing here on the stream. Unfortunately, the stream will not last as usual, like three hours. This stream will be will end in about an hour or so, because I still have some preparation to do for tomorrow's trip. Okay, so let's let's go through what you have to do. Okay. So here I, ha I have defined my role called matrix.1q tunnels. It's defined here and it has this tasks main YAML file. I don't need this part anymore. But this part though I need. Let me actually uncomment this part. So what this is doing? This is saying calculate new variables for Q and Q tunnels based on the lab. So basically my module is supposed to take all of the variables that are present right now, do some kind of magic calculation, whatever, and create a new variables for matrix switches and maybe for something else. But mainly for matrix switch, you would assign a specific VLAN, uh, VLAN number, you would have this variable, uh, you would have this variable, um, for the specific host for like matrix one and matrix two. So then 
it would be you know you could then later run is command module which will generate configuration from the template and based on these variables that you created dynamically using the module so what i'm doing here is that i will be calling this is.1q module slash plugin i will say well i don't i only need to run it once because everything um, it uses only local files i'm going to delegate this to localhost and i'm going also to say delegate delegate facts to two so these two options are pretty important so uh, even though this playbook is referring to group called matrix which contains two matrix which is matrix one and matrix two uh, I would like to execute this locally and only once. So I'm delegating this to localhost. So this it will be done only once. And when you say delegate facts to whatever your modular plugin is supposed to set, like a new variables, they will be set only for localhost at this moment now what later I'm going to do is I will uh, have an update matrix where I will say well for every matrix switch I'm going to set, set a fact set, set, set a new variable called magic where I will say hosts local host so these are variables of the local host and then devices and then uh, the name of the device. And give me a second, I have to open the door here because it's, I don't have any, uh, any air to breathe. Okay, I'm back. So let me also get something. So let, let's look on this, uh, well I started writing this plugin, it's not ready yet, but uh, I will show you my idea. So with this plugin, you're supposed to define this method called run. And basically whatever you set in the, you have to return a dictionary. And whatever you set in Ansible facts key, it's going to be set as a variables for this particular device where this is run. So I have here I have here a um, dictionary called devices. Inside of it I have a key devices and then I have a key for every single host. And then I say my key test will be for this box hello and for this box it will be world now i save this uh, this part in ansible facts and i return it so now if i change one thing in my module here so let's say i want to run i want to get post wars uh, no, I can say I want to get the magic variable like this.
basically after running this module I returned this thing and I saved it to localhost and it's saved to localhost here using delegate facts then I call set fact for every single matrix switch and I set magic variable to host wars localhost devices inventory host name so it sets it set this uh, magic variable so, sorry it says test to hello and test to world for different devices and this is exactly what I want my module is supposed to calculate the new VLAN numbers put them under specific interfaces and that's pretty much it it should update my host wires based on topology and selected lab okay so now I still have to figure out like the logic that I will be going through so I'm guessing it will all start here where I will see how many bots do I need and of what labs then for every single pot I'm going to go through connections for that lab type and connect devices hmm. yeah I think this will work maybe I will have to change here to list actually I'm not 100% sure yet so that I have my post uh, pods uh, sequentially yeah I think this is good like this list actually so that I have an order um, before we will proceed though hello yeah I'm, I'm working on um, I'm working on creating a lab system using Ansible using uh, basically the Q and Q tunnels and like pod gear and I I want to have a lab system which allows you to build any kind of overlay topologies between devices um, using Q and Q this is actually one of the projects that I have at work but this particular part I wanted to, to do live on this team I think it's pretty cool because it involves writing a new nuanceable module and plugin so yeah and my stru my yaml structure is pretty complex that's that's right but mm, apparently when you start using ansible for you want want to build something extremely cool well i really fast hit the wall of standard capability so ansible so for some stuff like it was obvious that it's going to I, I will need to write some custom stuff for it uh, how are you interacting with gen3 pre-generated configs okay good question so this particular case I have all of my every device I am co I am connecting to uh, well 
you know what honestly you didn't miss a lot so usually on every stream i cover some specific stuff obviously they have some common storyline which is network programmability but not all the time so in this particular case i'm writing a custom module uh, on second string that said last time i didn't get far during the whole stream i didn't basically three hour wasted mainly because the docs weren't weren't great to do what i wanted but answering your previous question is every my device here is connected to this uh like ethernet switch and it's connected to NAT cloud so the only thing i really did is i configured an ip address on management interface of every of these devices and i configured ssh so that if I do anything from my machine behind NAT Cloud, which is my lab server, I'm able to use Ansible to configure it. Uh, yes, this is uh, the idea here. In the real lab, we also want to automate even that part. So in like the projects that I'm working on, we want to automate even this first thing where you put some IP address and so on the device is supposed to boot uh, get some get bare minimum config from TFTP get static IP address from using the DHCP and then Ansible is supposed to basically basically uh, configure the whole infrastructure so yeah that's the idea Let me, before I move forward, let me check that I can still... I can still access my devices. So let's say if I do ping 192, 168, 122, 101. Okay, ping works. Hey, can I SSH? I think it was admin. Admin. So SSH is still working. Oops, what is happening here? The key has changed. Okay. Okay. I think I messed something up though. Uh, I think it was 151. Yeah. By the way, here is the config that I have. I have my uh, management VRF and I have IP address here on management port. I have default route in VRF and that's pretty much it. So I don't have any kind of config uh, besides bootstrapping. Okay, I can still search to all those books, okay. Tell me what what are you doing mostly? Are you preparing for some kind of certification, or you are interested in network programmability? So you know what what interests interests you, then just start the project there, and and you'll see how it goes. Okay, so let's think this through. I will have to go through every pod here and or maybe not. Nice. 
Nice. That, that's awesome. Pen testing. So, you know, you could build a pen testing lab in Gen 3. Have a bunch of a bunch of uh, some router switches, security appliances, Linux boxes, and you know, that's the tools that you usually do. And good good luck with see she by the way. Yeah, So I'm trying to figure out what is the best way to to do what I want. So I might have a number of overlay labs on my physical gear, which will be represented by different pod numbers. I have a connection details for every single one. What do I need to do? For every connection I have to figure out what is the corresponding port and I assign a VLAN number to it. Okay, I think that is... We'll have to refer to this port. To this thing. Let me change this to dot one q tunnel by the way. Okay, basically my task is assign VLANs here dynamically. Okay, I think I will have to build a reverse. I will have to build reverse mapping for this lab host name to device. I think I will have to start with that part. Nice, that, that's awesome, man. Unfortunately, I don't do a lot of pen testing. Well, I don't do any pen testing. <laughs> but I was participating twice in Capture the Flag. It was pretty fun. I may need to consult uh, task course. Let's try this. And what about here? I will have to. Have to, well, I can leave this part actually. Yeah, I, I heard about uh, OSCP before. 
Yeah, you know what? I agree with you 100% about it's great time to be in the industry. It's... So much is going on right now. A lot of uh, focus on security, a lot of focus on programmability and stuff, so yeah. So good. Thanks very much for the link. Okay, let's see what we have here. So my script, oops. It printed all variables for everything. Uh, you have to filter this. It's two keys. Okay, what keys do we have? Principal current hosts, skip tasks, and so on. There should be host wars though. Wars. Ansible user, connection, Ansible host, inventory file, inventory directory, Ansible playbook, inventory host name. Inventory host name short, group names in interfaces. What? So facts. Let's also see Ansible facts. Playbook Python role names. Groups. Play batch. Play hosts. Host wars, okay. Host wars are here. Wars, let's look on wars as well. Current hosts failed, host search pass, compression, pipelining, sudo exam. Okay, so all of the others do not seem relevant. So let's try running this and let's see. No, no worries, no worries. Uh, feel free to distract me. That that's why I'm doing this on the stream, to talk to people, to see what they're up to. Okay, this didn't wor work out so well. <laughs> uh, maybe what? Maybe I will need... Mm. New line is in invalid key for the argument for this function. How about how it's called? Ah. Let's see. Python 3 print function. I think it's end or something like this to have more space. Okay, it's separator. Old new and append a space instead of new line okay so then it should be and and let's put it everywhere while i am trying to figure out the variable to tell me about how did you come to pen testing field and how how did you understand this is what you want to do?
Hi Fallen Pass. I'm I'm creating a custom action plugin for Ansible to create dynamic config for my lab, which is supposed to configure Q and Q tunnels and uh, to create different overlay topologies. This is the idea. You know what? I'm curious if I convert your your nick to to letters. What what is going to be? Nice. So let's let's try this. So. Uh, what hex of nickname can be interpreted as? Oh, okay. Hold on. Nickname. I forgot how to convert the hex to hex to string. Ah, damn it! I thought it had a special meaning. So, Fallen, I do use Cisco devices here, uh, but um, it will be less about playbook, it will be more about generating a dynamic variables for my switches in the middle, so that can later I use built-in modules to, to, cre to push, create and push config to the devices. So idea here is that I want to be able to say I want a topology where R1 is connected to R2, R1 is connected to switch 2, R1 and that's all, right? And then I have some matrix which is in the middle that they are supposed to dynamically based on this intent, right? That I want to connect these two devices. These matrix switches are supposed to select some particular VLAN on let's say this port and on this port assign it dynamically and then later I uh, using built-in tools I am creating a template configuration for matrix switches that will configure the network that I want <laughs> they deal mostly with uh, Windows machines, or it's a mix of Windows, Linux, Mac, Max. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And the idea here is that based on my phys physical topology, I'm, I may want to say I want to have eight pods of this topology, two pods of this topology, and I want to be able to control this all infrastructure. Okay, I want to say, well, configure all of the pods, reconfigure pod one, reconfigure port two, and so on. Awesome, man. That's cool. How long are you doing pen testing and stuff? Yeah, absolutely. Basically, 
the uh, the whole idea of my lab uh, by fo following paths. Um, so the idea here uh, is generally speaking I want to reach to the point with my lab that I am changing some kind of variable that is in my files and then I commit this to git and it uh, launches what is called CI CD pipeline it spin up spins up lab in genus 3 configures everything does test for this specific change that I did if the change is okay this this is reported now you're supposed to have a button like I should have a report all tests have passed and a button push to master then you click this button push to master the same kind of code is supposed to push this new change to your production now uh, run tests again report to you test result if any test failed it should go it should do uh, it should do rollback so network is a code yeah I mean this is where I'm going I'm obviously not quite there yet but I decided to share this whole journey with others so how I started what you know what I'm doing uh, and so on so some of the tools I know pretty well some of the tools I have no clue about like Ansible I knew about it but I didn't have any hands-on experience so uh, but let's say Python I know quite well I'm programming in Python for I think five years now uh, so yeah maybe for someone it, it's it will be interesting to watch this okay so I had I had here one additional thing that I had to add so I have here a lab name which is also a variable and I don't have it I didn't pass it so I am supposed to pass this as well so minus e uh, lab name is going to be one programmability lab So now somewhere here I am supposed to get keys devices and devices and what else devices and pots and I should have pot pots somewhere oh right here okay cool so I have devices and pots and lab name as well Perfect. So now I could iterate through every pod or no. Let me actually do this. Because I think I will need to create a new mapping from this. Actually, no, this will not work out so well. Because lab host name is maybe not unique. You may have five pods of the same lab flavor. So you have the same host name. Hmm. I think I know what I am supposed to do. I need to create a mapping of lab host name and pod number to the switch and then this will be work out pretty nicely. Uh, let me try.
Okay, I think this will work out pretty well. Though I will change this to like this for number. No. I didn't I didn't do it properly. <sighs> this is key, this is value. Every item in devices Is a key like this. Damn it. So, should be different. So, values for real host name uh, and then device ticked. Okay. This will be real host name what is this oh uh what uh no this is device dict device dict okay this should work out pretty well i think so if i now print lab just name port to real host name, let's see what this does. Expected me where what? Value error too many values what? Oh, of course it's because it's items. Okay. So Okay, I have now a pair of lab host name and pod number to to the real host name. Okay, this is good. What else? So now I should be able to iterate through every of this, every every pod. Survival, thanks very much for following. So I should be able to iterate through every pod, to look on the specific Look on the specific topology that uh, this particular love flavor has and start figuring out connections between those and assign a specific villa number. <sighs> okay. Not only that, I, I need to copy paste the current interfaces for every matrix switch because i'm going to to change the variables ah, sounds pretty complex but let's do this pod number and this will be lab type So now I'm iterating for every pod, looking on the lab type, going through my topology, 
and creating a mapping back, assigning VLAN for every of this connection, modifying the interfaces dictionary that is that we currently have. Okay, this is doable, but that's a lot of pain. Oh, not only that, based on this connection, I am supposed to go to my variables for every device and figure out who we are connected to and to what port. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty fun. I'm thinking if it's quite, I mean, it's, it's doable, just there will be a lot of ugly code flow. That said, it's supposed to work. So, based on the based on my connection in topology, like this, I should replace this device. this host name with uh, a real host name first then I should go through every matrix switch and find the corresponding port on matrix switch that we, we have to change We could also go ahead and do this right now, actually. I can say, I can go through every matrix switch first and I can create a mapping table which says, um, interface number, matrix switch and interface number and interface name. <sighs> yeah, I think, I think this is what I'm going to do. I think I'm up for a challenge. <sighs> okay, so we will have we will need another mapping. No, I I, I need to put some pseudocode at least because for now. I don't see the clear picture in my head yet. So I will have to, at some point, I will have to iterate through every pot. And this is key. Well, no, we'll have here a list of something. Let me do this. <clears throat> okay, so let me write this down for pot, uh, for pot in pots, 
pot number is equal to pot uh, pot number and Uh, what else? Lab type is equal to pot pot uh, lab type. Okay, so I have this information now. I'm going to go inside of this lab type and look on the connection. So I'm going to print. Connections for connection in uh, oh this spot is also wrong. It's supposed to be this pot for connection in task wars connections print connection. Uh, actually not correct so this is going to be topologies uh, lab type lab type connections print connection let's see okay something is going on okay, so I'm able to print connections now ideally for every piece of it I have to find the mapping of the device and port num port number to specific interface on matrix switch. Okay, so let me write this down. So I need to take this part. And this is what is should be here and convert this to port number plus let's say interface name interface name on the matrix switch uh, I think no I think we can change this we will need to convert this to a tuple matrix matrix uh, switch name and port number and we will be assigning some VLAN number to this pair and then and then increment this okay so current dot one q VLAN will be task wars let's put this here uh, sorry um, I see your question but right now I'm not uh, I already lost. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so here I should be able to access this. I hope, but I am not sure. Current dot one Uh, what? Uh, okay. Yes, I can access it from here. I think I can actually move it back. Did I delegate this? Yeah, I did delegated this to localhost. Okay, I can move it back here. Okay. 
perfect. So this VLAN is going to be assigned for every connection and then at the very end I'm going to increment this VLAN uh, plus equal one. Then for the next pod I'm going to start with the next tenth. Okay, so I also need to convert something like if my current VLAN is 23.05, I want to convert this to 23.10. Okay, so how would I do that? I think it would be, I need modulus 10. Is module 10 and it will be 10 X plus something like this so X plus 10 minus ah no Enjoy a meal. Thanks for joining. See you next time. I remain there. Will be current dot one Q VLAN module stem. If remain there. It is not no if remain if remainder then current dot one q vlan is going to be uh x plus ten minus remainder okay like this perfect okay good so here i need to implement logic plus here i need to create this mapping this ma mapping is a little bit tricky well right now i have lab host name pod number port number I already can convert this to real host name. I think I, I, I kind of have an idea what this is going to be. So lab post name port pod to real host name port number. Wow, that's a big, very big variable name, but that's all right. And so how to do this? Okay, knowing the lab type, I'm going to connections. I'm taking this. I can convert device host name to the real host name. 
Because then I have to go through every matrix switch and find where it is. Yeah, I will create a little bit different structure. So you'll have a structure called a real host name, port number, a real host name port to matrix switch name, number of ports. Yes, this will work out well. So a real host name port to matrix switch name port number okay and to do this i have to go for every switch in the group matrix for for switch variables in uh, task vars groups groups is called switch matrix i think this is going to iterate through every device and i need to look into the host vars of that switch for matrix switch variables in task stores okay for every interface now well i can do that but i will still have to take this dictionary and modify it We'll see. Okay, right now let's let's just try to doing that. So for matrix switch variables in task wars, host wars, like this. For interface in matrix matrix switch variables interfaces. And I also need a number for uh, I interface in let's do port number interface in enumerate from this. We will say real host name port to matrix switch name port number will be. I don't like this, not real, it's too connected. Device port, port to matrix switch name port number. Okay. So connected device name is going to be uh, interface connected. device name connected connected device port is going to be port so now i can say well 
for connected device name, connected device port. Okay, so this is going to be pair which is this will be matrix matrix switch name and port number. Okay, this will be matrix switch variables inventory host name plus uh, port number. I hope this is all right. Print connected device port to matrix switch name port. Unhashable type what? What do you mean unhashable type list? No, it fell somewhere in different place. For matrix switch variables in task wars. Let me try printing this. No, this doesn't work. Hmm. Oh, correct. Uh, for matrix switch in the group in in this group. Um matrix switch uh, dict let's say is host wars matrix switch dict let's just have a full name switch interfaces matrix switch dict inventory host name yeah this is supposed to work uh name from matrix switch okay let's look from this nope key error matrix one oh okay so because this is host wars matrix switch okay now this is going to work Okay, perfect. So now I have the mapping of the real device name to matrix switch and its port number. Perfecto. So I can now create this mapping. So here I can say, well, real host name is a pair.
Oh, and here then for for a connection what end? In connection. I can say that my lab host name is going to be well I can get it from here no not from here from topology my real host name well no I take this device first device and port lab host name will be connection and device port is equal to connection and port so real host name of this thing is going to be connected device for to matrix no lab host name for to real host name and we are putting a tuple which will be lab host name and pod number in order to print real host name Hi Dmitry, what font do you see in IDE? I don't know. Menlo, I'm using default Mac font. Okay, perfect. So now I can map SJBR1 from every connection to its real host name. By knowing the real host name, I can know what is the name. Yeah. I can say matrix switch and matrix switch let's do matrix switch name and matrix uh, switch port number port number is equal to connected blah 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 and this is going to be a real host name and port I think so and let's print matrix switch name matrix switch uh, port number actually. Let's see. Oh, perfect. Oh, the, the port number is uh, is wrong. I guess. Yeah, something is not correct here. Okay. Okay, I have here this mapping, which is correct. And I need to get this mapping, so why can't I print it? Oh, 
node crashes somewhere. Dict object is not callable. What? Oh, right. Perfect. So now I can match this to port on matrix switch. So now I can assign a VLAN for this particular matrix switch. Basically, I can say I can say task wars interfaces. No. Task wars host wars. Yeah, task wars host wars host wars. Uh, matrix switch name. Matrix switch name. Uh, interfaces. Interfaces. Stories matrix switch name interfaces. Interfaces is equal to and then the number matrix switch port number is going to be equal to my current dot one key villain. If I did everything correctly, after I change this, I can now say let's do print task wars host wars for matrix 1 and matrix 2. I will comment this out, comment that out, this one and this one. Uh, maybe I will print on the interfaces. And there is this one. I also need this print here. Look on the look at this. Oh, okay. I made a small mistake here. Name. I just assign a number here. Very close, but I need to say uh, dot one q just v one. Look on this. So now for every matrix switch, I am assigning this villain dynamically. And now I, the only thing I have I left to do is just save this to variables of specific host and I'm done. I have here villain this, villain this, villain that. We also do some error checking so that it informs you that okay. Uh, maybe you specified the wrong port somewhere and so on. But yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Okay, unfortunately I have to go and uh, right now so I will not be able to finish everything. But I, I think we made a solid progress. I will have to clean this code a little bit. Maybe rename this part a, a little bit as well. But I'm pretty satisfied with what we have currently. So... Thank you very much guys for joining today, I hope this was useful, uh, no stream tomorrow but stream in one week on Sunday as usual.
thank you very much the recording will be i hope i will actually upload it today because i will be absent for the whole next week thank you you have a great uh sunday happy easter if you are celebrating easter and take care bye